Hello there, my name's Ashley Shaw and in today's vlog I'm going to be discussing the Middle East and yes I know that sounds like a really big topic but I want to cover it in apples and oranges terms. I don't do um, big fancy explanations, I do apples and oranges, let's deal with it on as simple level as we can. So the, the, the reason for my vlog today is the fact that I want to explain how Britain is completely and utterly to blame for what's going on in the Middle East to this very day. And I'm doing this because I'm sick to death of hearing racists and bigots tell me that Britain has nothing to do with what's going on in the Middle East, that Muslims have been fighting and killing each other forever, and that somehow Britain and the West are the victims of these terrible Muslims. Well, I, I, that's what I'm doing it for today, so the Middle East. After the First World War, uh, Britain, in its arrogance, um, we changed things. Not only did we give the land of Palestine away to Israel uh, after having beaten the Ottoman Empire, uh, we had the mandate. So not only did we give away Palestinian land, which we are fighting to this very day, the repercussions of that are going on right this second, but so are everything else in the Middle East, because um, I can't remember his name, but one man uh, is actually, he is to blame for the borders and the boundaries that are straight. Have you noticed in the Middle East, they've all got these really little straight boundaries, these walls? Well, they never used to be there until Britain, in its arrogance, decided that we knew best and we were going to carve up the Middle East. And what what happened with this, it meant that like the people in the Middle East, they, they were Bedouins, they, they travelled, they didn't have borders, they didn't work like that. It didn't work like that. And suddenly Britain comes along and puts all these borders up. So people couldn't have their normal way of living anymore. And some people found family on one side of a border and they were stuck on another side of the border. And so that's another of the repercussions of today. The arrogance of one man who believed that because he was British, he had the right to carve up the Middle East. And let's, let's go on to Iraq. So we've got the Iraq war. Now, we all know what that was about. That was about lies. And that was about, I mean, Saddam used to be Britain and America's friend. But when we could no longer control him and he wasn't doing what we wanted him to, that's when things changed. So they made up the whole concoction of weapons of mass destruction and went in there and destroyed a whole country. We did that for nothing. How many millions... How many millions of Iraqis died because of our actions when there was nothing there in the first place? And then what do we do? We put in a leader that we believe will be good for us. No, we should have put in things that where Iraqi people could vote for who they wanted as a proper democracy, not who we, here's our candidate that we're putting up. No. We should not have that kind of control in other people's countries. It's not about whether their leaders are right for us. It's about whether their leaders are right for them. And so because of our, one, running away, which we did, we just abandoned Iraq, and the other because it was the person that was put in was somebody that was good for the West and not actually good for everybody within his own country. Then... That there was obviously going to be factions and turmoil, but don't think that this new round on Iraq and Syria has anything to do with anything other than oil and power, because that's what it's about. It's about oil and power. It isn't about um, ISIS. ISIS? Who were ISIS? 35,000 people are ISIS. 35,000 people. And yet we're being taught as a world that we have to fear them. We have to fear. I'm not frightened of ISIS. ISIS is over there. Do you know what? We, we as Europeans, cannot say we're defending ourselves. We aren't defending ourselves. We're attacking another country. You can't defend yourself from somebody who isn't actually attacking you. And don't be telling me that they've killed Christians. They've killed far more Muslims. ISIS have killed far more Muslims and Christians. And what's more, so have we. And yet in the West, we're being led to believe that we're the victims of some... Islamic terrorism? No, we're not. They are the victims of our terrorism. Because, to be honest with you people, my idea of terrorism is not wondering whether somebody's going to blow up a train. My idea of terrorism is seeing drones going above you. My idea of terrorism is bombs being dropped from the sky on your head. That's terrorism. That's terror every day. 
and in a world, I'm going back to Palestine, that believes that the occupier, who has no right to be there, has the right to defend himself over civilians that they occupy. And we keep up that when we were the ones to cause for it in the first place. That is a shame and a disgrace. A shame and a disgrace. So I'm, I'm sick of a world that is telling us that the people who are doing all the killing are the ones that are in the right and the people that are being killed are the ones that are in the wrong. No, it's only ever the civilians that suffer. And I'm sick of the civilians suffering. And I'm sick of a world that tells people like me in the West that we are in danger. We're not in danger. They're in danger from us. So please, people, I don't care what your religion is. I don't care what your colour is. Humanity, as humanity, we have to stand together. They're taking us into wars that we don't want. People are being killed everywhere. Civilians, if we don't stand up and unite against this as humanity, what is our world going to become? So put aside your sectarianism. Put aside your racism. Put aside your ego. Put aside your own needs and wants. And think about what is right for everybody in the world. Think about what we need to do. Well, the first thing we need to do is stand up and say, not in my name, no more. I do not want to be living in a world where the aggressor is seen as the victim and the victim is seen as the aggressor. One love, people. One humanity. It's the only way forward. Please stand up. Shout against it as loudly as you possibly can. Free the world. Be that person. Peace and love.